Hi guys, Captain Orion here, and today we're going to be putting the characters head to head in a challenge I like to call the Battle for the Valley. Now, this battle is a new series with each episode featuring four new characters battling it out until we get to the final where we crown our overall winner of the Valley. Now, before we meet this week's contenders, let's run over the rules and kind of have a look at how we're going to actually be judging this. Now, the contestants will be judged based on fun factor, interactivity, However, we also will be giving out bonus points based on any extra features these characters may offer. We will also be judging each character based on their home, as well as their quests and friendship rewards. Again, we'll probably be looking at anything extra this character might offer, and kind of consider that as we're going through. However, with that out of the way, let's meet the contenders for this episode. Today, it's going to be Mickey, Goofy, Scrooge and Merlin. All four of these characters are some of the first characters you interact with and as such I thought it would be good to group them together in a head-to-head. -head. Now first up is the classic It's Mickey Mouse. Now Mickey's obviously one of the major IPs in the game but he's also one of the first characters after Merlin that we interact with. When we look at Mickey's home externally it screams Toontown for me and for those who don't know I'll put kind of some references of what they made in the parks and you'll be able to see. However, I do think they've done a great job developing this as well as kind of matching the colour scheme. So I would say it's definitely on brand for Mickey Mouse. Looking inside, it's also very well set up and we can see even the source, his sorcerer clothes over on the side. Now, whilst all characters will have similar items such as a fridge and a stove, it's really the level of details. And I know since the release date, the devs have gone and updated some of the interiors, with Mickey's being one of them. Overall, I'd say Mickey's house scores as follows. 4 out of 5 for Fun Factor. I think it's really quirky and you'll easily see how each item kind of links to Mickey's background. In terms of interactivity, there's nothing major here outside of the fridge and the stove, so I'm scoring it a 2 out of 5. And if we just think of extra features, I genuinely don't think Mickey has too much to offer for the home itself, so no bonus points awarded here. However, let's go on to look at the quests and the reward path that comes with it. Now, starting at the story, I think Mickey's story is a really good introduction at trying to introduce you to the valley and give you some backstory of what's happened. I love the fact that it ties in with unlocking Mini as you progress these through, now, in terms of the rewards you get along the way, I think they are great introduction ones as well, with my personal favourite honestly being the Enchanted Fountain at level 10. I think it looks spectacular and it's such a great feature, it literally features in my plaza, so that's an idea for you. Fun factor, I'm giving it a 5. Interactivity, I will also give a 4, um, because I just think that it's a very engaging quest story, and I think it's genuinely deserving of that. Now, when we talk about extra features and bonus points here, I'm going to be looking at kind of the rewards we get from it and anything kind of little hidden extras we get in there. So, I'm actually going to be giving Mickey a 4 out of 5. And here's my reasons. During his quest, you will actually be shown and eventually unlock a kind of hidden room. However, this hidden room even has a hidden hidden room in it. And... I'm not going to spoil it, I've done a short, so if you really want to go see, the short will be available. However, I think it's great and just provides such depth and just a little bit of an easter egg to keep the characters, uh, to keep the player going, sorry. And because of that, I genuinely think, like, I know it's being, it's being quite, like, out there, but I think a 4 is quite reasonable, to be honest. Now, in terms of does Mickey give anything else to the valley, well, honestly, not really. You'll interact with Mickey during some other character quests. But other than that, you don't really kind of talk to him or see him, other than maybe if you use him as a buddy. So, for that reason, there's no extra scoring going on. There's nothing kind of there to award, really. However, that does leave Mickey with a grand total of 19 points. Leading us into our next contestant, who's Merlin. Now, Merlin is one of the characters, and literally I believe it's the first character you actually interact with when you start your adventure in the valley. Now, if we look at Merlin's house, we can see this absolutely screams wizard. I love the fact that there's literally books everywhere, as well as potions on the wall. I feel this house is so well done, and honestly, my favourite bit is the fact that there is a giant rock here, 
with lots of books around it, Merlin's clearly trying to work out something related here. Overall, I'd school Merlin's house on Fun Factor a 5 out of 5 as honestly, I think it tells us its own little story. You can clearly see with the different items around the house. However, there actually isn't many interactive objects at all around Merlin's house. There's no fridge, there's no stove, there's nothing like that. And for that reason, I'll be scoring a 1 in interactivity. Um, in terms of bonus points, none to award in this. There's nothing spectacular that screams Merlin's house in here for me. Um, so, nothing being awarded on this one. Now, in terms of friendship levels and quests and things like that, from a quest point of view, I feel like Merlin's quests are pretty simple. Most of them are very easy to find. However, I feel like that's the point. I feel like they're meant to be easy because he's one of the first characters you meet. And therefore, I'm going to score the fun factor as being probably around a three. I think it's a good introduction and pretty, kind of pretty good. Interactivity for it, I'm actually going to vote a two because you don't really, you interact with some characters. However, otherwise, I feel like you're just, it's kind of just trying to teach you the game, right? So for that is a two. Now, if we actually look at the rewards as well, I'm kind of joining it with the scoring and I've probably given the scoring too early for this. However, I really actually like them mainly because it's old school Merlin. Like it's the character IP that actually ties in with him. It's not like random wizardy stuff that you expect to see. I mean, it's got a potion covered, so that's kind of one of them, but the rest is quite like on brand really for Merlin. And so that's kind of also part of the reason for the score. Bonus points wise, there's nothing really to add here, um, however I would note that a lot of the characters do interact with Merlin, um, however we'll visit that in just the next section. So the next section is actually a bonus point section and I think there's quite a lot to award Merlin here. So Merlin's the one that actually helps you get all, almost all if not all your starter items it's been quite a while so I can't actually quite remember however I know he's there for quite a few of them and so that's one bonus feature that has Merlin the other is you basically interact with Merlin in I feel like almost every quest line that comes up in this game and again that's a bonus feature for me um I feel like all the villagers are like it's something magical go to Merlin and I really like that so I'm actually gonna give Merlin the bonus points of five today so that's going to be the max bonus points i'm going to ever award uh, a character so it can only go up to five however i feel like that's a fair representation i think that's pretty good pretty fair that now scores merlin a total of 16 points putting him behind mickey however i still think that's a fair place to put him um i think each of them so far have had their pros and their cons and so let's look at the next one so, the next contender is Scrooge McDuck. Now, Mr. Riches himself is, again, one of the characters you meet near the start with his bank. You kind of repair the bank and you interact with him a lot and spend a lot of money with Scrooge. So, I guess let's look at his house. Now, in terms of his house, it is actually the bank. Well, when I say bank, I kind of mean shop. It's a shop, but it's got a giant vault, so it's kind of a bank. However... That is his house. Now, this place sells loads of things. It is wildly interactive. There's loads of things to interact with in terms of items. And, you know, you can actually order stuff from him as well. So, I am going to immediately, out of the gate, rate him a 5 on Fun Factor. You never know what you're going to go in for and or what you're going to find. Um, and I'd also give him a 5 on Interactivity. Um, mainly because... Again, the store kind of changes every time, or every day, um, and you can also order items from him. I don't know if anyone knew that. You probably did if you've been playing Dreamlight for a while. But if you didn't, you can order furniture items and clothes from him. Um, so say you didn't, you found it in the store, it was there, you looked at it and you thought, oh, maybe I'll go back later, but you forgot. Doesn't matter. You should be able to just go back and order it from him. Um, the same if you get something from your star path and you want that later, you can go and actually order more of that item just to help decorate. So, wow, five out of five so far. Let's talk about Scrooge and his character quests. 
and the rewards that come with it as well. Now, I think we're going to sense a common theme here, but when we talk about quests and friendship levels, well, Scrooge's again, it's kind of easy and kind of boring in the same sense. Some of the quests involve just putting up signs, and for the rest it's kind of a treasure hunt. Now, that's alright, and it kind of involves interacting with more characters, so you'll interact with Ursula a lot more during this. However, there's not really much to offer, and even if we look at his friendship rewards, again, they're not anything grand. There's some good motifs in here. I would say it kind of goes a bit more towards the motif side. When you use them, again, I'm really not sure. They don't really apply to much, in my opinion. Um, and also, I would say probably the best item, again, is the level 10, which is Scrooge's spare safe. But mm, it's just an extra chest that looks a bit different. It doesn't really offer more. doesn't offer more storage space. And it's really expensive if you want to order more. And for that... I'm afraid on fun factor, I'm going to have to give it probably about a 2. Interactivity, I'm going to give it a 3. You do interact with a few characters, um, but other than that, there's nothing more to it. Bonus points, none this time. I can't really see any to kind of award Scrooge. Now, in terms of bonus points in general for what Scrooge offers, he's got a store um, which is kind of covered in the home section. So I don't actually know if I'm going to award Scrooge anything bonus points towards. Actually, I am. I'm going to award Scrooge probably just an extra point because it's mainly annoying that we have to do this. Um, and that is because you have to pay to get the houses built and upgrade houses. That's the only kind of other thing Scrooge does. And again, it's kind of costing you money. <laughs> so at that detriment, I will give Scrooge a bonus of one point. And with that, that scores Scrooge a total of 16 points, which again, still leaves Mickey on top. However, it's a really good score. And at the end, when we do all of these and we kind of look at all the character scores, I'm going to chuck them all together. So it's not just about this round. It's also as a general thing. Let's see what the final contestant has to offer. Our final contestant is Goofy. Again, Goofy's one of those characters that we meet really early on and is the, I believe, the second one we might interact with after Merlin. He'll kind of introduce your skills into crafting and so is a really good intro character. And that's kind of why I've grouped all of these together. They're all intro characters and I thought it would be fair to kind of compare them together in that sense. Now, when we look at Goofy's home, it has, it's just really nice. It's nicely laid out, the colors match and it's got nice plumes of smoke coming out the chimney. It looks very cozy and yeah, it looks very Goofy as you can see. Now, if we go inside, it actually struck me a little bit when I went inside because for me, it looks a bit like Mickey's home. Like, why does Goofy have pillows with Mickey and Minnie's face on? I'm not quite sure. It does have some fishing theme uh, going on there. Um, and again, interactivity-wise, it does have the stove and the fridge. It has a nice fireplace as well, which is quite cosy. I'm pretty sure you can turn those on and off now. So, what do I score it? Well, a fun factor, I'd probably give it a three. Middle of the road, it looks pretty good, but the Mickey and Minnie thing kind of throws me off a bit. Interactivity, again, I'll probably give it a two. There's nothing major here, and yeah, there's nothing really to say about the house itself. Now, let's look at the next category. That is the quests and friendship tree. Now, for Goofy, again, it's very simple. However, I would point out two things. One, Goofy's kind of quests are really introductions. However, his focus more on photography and memories, which I really like. They encourage you to go around the village and I don't know, there's something about like the puzzle pieces of the memory piece like segments which makes me feel really comfy um, and warm and I quite like that. However, um, in terms of his rewards, they're kind of meh in my opinion. Like there's nothing amazing that stands out for me. Fun factor, I'm going to give it a 4 and interactivity... Mm. Maybe a three. I think that's probably fair. Um, bonus points, probably none in this section. However, let's now look at the bonus kind of features, I suppose, that Goofy brings to the valley. So, Goofy has his own stools, which are everywhere and are very... I mean, it's the thing you interact with most, right? Because you'll have to buy seeds and stuff like that from them. I 
think that that is worth an additional two bonus points. And the reason why Scrooge scored lower was because it was part of his house. This is something entirely separate. I think it's worth two bonus points and... So let's have a look at how all of our characters scored in the Battle of the Valley and claim our winner for this round. Now the... well, in last place, unfortunately, I love him the bits, it's Goofy, scoring a total of 14 points across kind of the areas. Now the next is actually tied second, and that is Merlin and Go and sorry, I was gonna say Goofy again. Merlin and Scrooge. Both have very great things to offer, both very different characters as well. And surprisingly enough, I actually didn't think it would score this way, <laughs> but Mickey is actually on top in this round, scoring a total of 19, making Mickey the winner of this round of the battle for the valley. However, stay tuned, we've got more rounds to come, more characters to go through, and like I said, at the end of the whole season, we'll see how each character scored and kind of place them that way. However guys, that's it for today's video. Please don't forget to leave a like if you enjoy, subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date on everything Dreamlight Valley. And until next time, I'll see you later.